Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Welcome to a game called Tiny Bunny. Now we're gonna check out this game. It's a horror game found on itch.io. I'll leave a link down there, just down there, down there in the description for you to be able to check out the game for yourself. Anyway, let's get into it. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its last days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green thicket gazed back its, with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, wheezing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all. Still. Hey. That was wicked. I like that. Hey, put your book away. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line and I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness swelled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. <laughs> it looked like a jellyfish from the Coastal Odyssey. I love that show. I butchered that entirely. Oh well. Continuing on, I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how could the black forest is at night? How cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this? Carved on the other side of the table? Karina? <laughs> That's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal damaging the furniture like that. Ooh, I'ma tell, I'ma hold that against you. I'ma blackmail my mama. Wait, that yeah, that's kind of taking it too far. Don't, 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 don't do that. I've seen a couple of videos that I can't really say about blackmailing your mama. Don't do that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar though. Yeah, I bet she would. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagine her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagine my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Olya sleeps nowadays and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. <clears throat> Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's washed 
watching you closely and sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her own funeral. She had already bought a casket and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it with my grandma. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all, the, all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead, but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Oyo was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly little woodland creature. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Oh yeah, look, it's a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision just a little bit and look under a certain angle. Not outside, on the window. Look, here's the nose and here's... Hey, eat up. Y y yes, ma'am. Just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, hurry up. We don't have much time. Ah! There it is. But it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. It does. Stop it. These kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty pattern, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with a long, with long measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. It is a majestic beard. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. <laughs> this was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Oya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point in all this? Through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply. For the sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with D. D. <laughs> D I V O. I don't even want to finish it. It's divorce. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Have anybody seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did. Maybe not. It's not my day to keep up with them. You're a grown man. A father of two. And still, Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket along with your phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl? 
there was no owl. But there was. It had giant glowing eyes. Oya sprang up from the chair and placed her hands on, on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes the size of an apple each with her fingers. Last year you had Baba in your closet, and now this owl? But I saw it. Oya shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice? Don't bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Oya patted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom Dave gave dad a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example... But how do you fix a relationship? That's a tough one, brother. Mom moved into the living room and I was alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Oya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved into this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off of the troubles we had with the move and our parents. And then Oya saw she went she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Oya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. School, 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 school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces and a pair of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creature were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares filled with icy sneers made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodied shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wish for anything to happen. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that much. I didn't want to see the people who are just itching to smack me on the head trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. It felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or, or some sort of monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Oya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagine mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagine my future classmates lying in their beds just like me listening to the howls of invisible were werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet. My mom. Oh.
Oh, that's so cute. The house creaked, pressed, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building buzzed with the neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind a wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though, I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners on the closet cobwebs and under the stairs. And they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner. Almost as if the old photos of my deceased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, squeaking. Rusty drains were moaning. The attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic, demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my per perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of wind of the creaking old house and my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like somebody is playing out there amidst the cold, snowy night, right? Someone was just dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out with the dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around, holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious, anxious at the same time. Suddenly the music had stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place and I could sw swear pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by pitch dark shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was thumping around like a bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains, curtains with a swift motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right and circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into bed and covered myself with a blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up onto her head and pulled up their eyelids with their tiny legs. Then their wrinkly eyeballs w would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout my the whole procedure. And now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the islands of Buyan, underneath the blemished sun and the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair for the spawn from the devil's lair to feast and always leave alone God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under my blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. 
The sound scratched on my eardrums. In reality, something or someone was scratching at the front door, clawing at wood, demanding to be let inside. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. I hugged my knees, placed my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then... The doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway once, twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then started clicking violently. My jaw cramped from fear, my wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now... Now you'll see. The door was wide open. Darkness wreathed inside the carnivorous mouth of a doorway. To me. It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling, ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony. <clears throat> Hold on, let me try that again. Tony. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Olya, I I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olya frowned and sticked out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me uh, just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olya sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But I was sure. What? But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video, Sleeping Beauty. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? That question took me by surprise. All right, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied, what studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with the feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Y yeah just, just just a moment. You son of a bitch. <sighs> this kid's depressed. Insanely depressed. Like, he needs some antidepressants or something. Not that I'm all about... Never mind. You know what? Never mind. I'm not even going to go down that track. <laughs> oh, that's going to open up a can of worms. Let me get back into this because that completely threw off, threw me off. All right. That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. 
Who could be knocking on our door here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled. I felt extremely unsettled just from the silly thought that our morning guest could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. In the closet? Under the table? Behind the curtains where Olya always hides? Tony, come here. I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged him toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello. Senior officer who wore a grim expression nodded. A boy has gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. There was a it, there was a ginger boy around the age of elementary school pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. No, sir, I haven't. Are you sure? Look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anybody around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right. Your window looks straight at the forest, don't they? The window? No, I haven't seen anything. I see. His voice was tired, but his eyes, his stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt which his giant shadow cast over me. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some weird reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit. It's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yeah, everything is alright. Thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Um, can I help you somehow? I asked, I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy around your age, wears the same type of goggles. <laughs> Funny. Always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in a police school when his family visited visit us this summer. Wanted to help other people just like me, you see. I felt uncomfortable. As if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home. S stay away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Oh, sorry. Well then. What grade are you in, Tony boy? Six. Have you made any friends here so far? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Ah, then I'll leave you my number just in case. Call me if you have any new information. The policemen were gone along with the shadows. The smell of cheap cologne and their photo of a smiling boy. His face stood still, still stood before my eyes. I thought about what he felt, being all alone right now, there. For some reason, I imagined the forest swaying in the wind. What did his poor parents feel? What would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry? Thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other, like they always do? And eventually forget me. Mom, this Fova, did he go missing in our forest? Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window, at the road. The police UAZ drove off toward the village. The officer's nephew came to mind while I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. 
I remembered all of the teenage mystery dramas novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for cues, spied on suspicious people, and after a set of amazing adventures, BAM! Solved any complicated case. They became local celebrities and must have made their parents real proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest, and then it clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Maybe I'll find that lost boy, and I'll get my reward. Oya will be so happy. And not only Oya, mom and dad too. Maybe they'll even forget about their quarrels for a while. Maybe I'll even save us from the D word. I fantasized about buying Oya a Tamagotchi and getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes for myself. A whole box of Kinder Surprise. When was the last time our parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. There's that annoying song about it. I had little to no idea what was the accountant's job like. They counted money. Neighbors used to envy us, but nowadays mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets. And dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olya. Sometimes I gave her my share, too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. I couldn't wait to go out, looking for clues. I'm going outside. Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? The force is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals? Or something even worse? Even worse? Echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or, or shall I repeat myself? Man, don't make me repeat myself. You better pack your school bag and go play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen and meant that the argument was over and Mom had the last word. Okay. Well... I didn't expect this to be so long. I really didn't. I didn't expect it to be this long, but this is good. So apparently there's going to be five chapters of this, but this is just the first chapter. Um, I like this so far. I'm hoping that it's going to be more, I don't know, more interactive as we go on. Um, it seems like it. Anyway, that does it for this episode. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like comment and subscribe down below um i'd greatly appreciate it in the meantime you guys have a wonderful night Bye bye